Thank you, thank you. Woohoo! Welcome to Good News Week and the big news, rabbits! Rabbits! <laughs> They're back in such a big way, farmers in South Australia are being urged to get rid of them with poison gas and explosives. <laughs> Blow your rabbits in the air like you just don't care! <laughs> Blow your rabbits! Blow your rabbits! Blow your rabbits in the air like you just don't care! <laughs> It'll be like furry fireworks. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's why they call it shock and awe. Oh. <laughs> Blowing up rabbits does make them a lot fluffier. <laughs> Not as cute, though. <laughs> and if it all goes well, we can use the same technique to solve the problem with the boat people. <laughs> I can't believe you clapped for that, Australia. You let me down. <laughs> let me down. I'm ashamed of you. Wanted silence at the end of that. <laughs> yes, after decades researching the most effective way to destroy rabbits, the CSIRO got their latest technique from an Elmer Fudd cartoon. <laughs> the main problem with explosives is it's not very, very quiet. <laughs> The experts warn, when you do throw dynamite into a hole, watch out it isn't thrown out of another hole just behind you by a waskily wabbit. <laughs> of course, to get into the heart of a large warren where the explosives can do the most damage, farmers will have to employ suicide ferrets. <laughs> and tiny vests packed with Semtex. I'm just not sure it's a good idea. We tried to wipe out rabbits with myxomatosis, and they developed an immunity. Then we tried Khaleesi virus, and they developed an immunity to that. If rabbits develop an immunity to dynamite, <laughs> we're gonna be in trouble. What if the bunnies evolved to beat the explosives, like growing armor plating and wings and shooting lasers from their eyes? <laughs> That's just one of the many scenarios put forward by Barnaby Joyce. <laughs> Ah, in Canberra, Parliament House is going to save $120,000 a year by getting rid of its pot plants. <laughs> the problem is, while they're sending back the plants, bureaucrats don't have a clue what to do with the pots. <laughs> Lots of pots. What do you do with them? For now, they're going to put them in storage, or as the government likes to call it, temporary detention. <laughs> What do you do with a bunch of useless, empty vessels in Parliament? <laughs> They've already got a Senate. <laughs> Tony Abbott doesn't know what to do with them because moving pots is a housewife's job. <laughs> oh, 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 the lady's getting a bit angry there. Maybe they should stack them outside to help the Prime Minister in case the brakes fail on his Toyota Prius. <laughs> or every Thursday, funny terracotta hat day. <laughs> the US Army has established a new interrogation unit for questioning terror suspects. But it's okay because they won't be using torture. They'll be doing scientific research. <laughs> you know, the sort of research you might conduct on a lab rat or a whale. <laughs> The unit is called the High Value Interrogation Group and was set up to replace its predecessor, Fingernails Are Us. <laughs> the research could finally answer questions like, do terrorists bounce? <laughs> What's the boiling point of a terrorist? <laughs> and how do you get a terrorist into a milk bottle? <laughs> And if we can't make them talk, we will make them listen by growing an ear on their back. <laughs> the only real problem is when the prisoners confess before you've finished your experiment. <laughs> but it's not all bad. The terrorists might get lucky and find themselves being used for uh, shampoo research. <laughs> Ahmed, how shiny does your beard look now? <laughs> and that's the good news.
you. Good evening. Tonight, barely able to contain our excitement, the Leader of the House, Mikey Robbins. He hosted a TV show called You Bet Your Ass. He's currently touring the world with Ricky Gervais, and he's an international stand-up star from Toronto, the compelling Stuart Francis. <laughs> and bringing his good stuff to the Rhino Room in Adelaide very soon, the sweet and playful Tom Gleeson. <laughs> and they're getting no respect from the yummy Yahoo Claire Hooper. <laughs> Winner of Best Newcomer at last year's Melbourne International Comedy Festival, host of Triple J Breakfast and heading to the Powerhouse in Brisbane, the boy wonder, Tom Ballard. <laughs> and, quite simply, one of Australia's most beloved television personalities. Oh, no, wait, it's Corinne Grant. <laughs> oh, no, wait. Ah, so we've all been on before, apart from you, Stuart. I, I don't know what I'm doing here. Uh, no one's, no one's even heard of me. I, I should be on the, I should be on the white room. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bam! He comes in early, comes in hard, comes in fast. That's, that's what she said last night. <laughs> I actually can't make fun of the white room because I did a screen test for it and they didn't choose me. <laughs> How full on's that? That's I was reading the critiques of that show and I was like, no one likes it and I didn't even get to be on that. <laughs> but we have you here and it's lovely to have you here. Tom. Oh, thank you very yeah. much. It's good to be here. And Stuart, are you, are you touring this country? You're taking your special I just arrived home? Tuesday and yeah. I love it. I love it here. <laughs> It's like ste stepping back into the 70s. You guys still have... No, you still have racism in Woolworths. Like, what's not the like? You come from Canada. You're not allowed to talk about stepping back in time when you come from Canada. No, 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 no. Canada's like America's New Zealand. Exactly. Yeah. Or America's Tasmania. Uh, <laughs> ouch. Yeah, uh... <laughs> Just like that. You're like, don't accuse us of being racist, you crazy canook. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> it certainly started very early, hasn't it? We're oh. giving him the Harry Connick Jr. treatment. <laughs> Thanks, your input. Yes. On your bike. <laughs> Did I say I love being here? Yeah. <laughs> That's better. Uh, and Tom, you Hello. well? I'm How, well, thank you. How's it going on Triple J Breakfast? Are you enjoying it? It's good. It's not as good as when you did it, Paul. Oh, well, that was a long time. I did it with Mike. Yes, yeah. yes. I'll never forget the morning Paul started crying during a Nick Cave song, and we thought, he's not coping with his early mornings very well. <laughs> 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 I, was, uh, I, th I think it was, it was a Waterboy song, though. Hold yeah. the moon. Hold the moon. Uh, I, I had to take him to the corner and hold him and nurse him. <laughs> I, was, uh, I was listening the morning you came in two hours late. I was hey. pretty proud of you. Two hours late to a three-hour oh, show. It wasn't two hours late. <laughs> It wasn't too late, it was half an hour late. All right. How long have you been working there when you came in that late? Uh, five weeks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's very, very Triple J, isn't it? Yeah, Please tell right. me you've been out all night doing something hardcore and, and youthful. No? No. <laughs> I, I know that I'm getting old, because when I hear that you, heard, you know, turned up two hours late, for me, I'm just thinking, oh, my taxes are paying for that shit. <laughs> 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 I'm trying to find a call, but I'm annoyed. I always love it when we have you on. Look at the beautiful blonde hair again. It just seems to be a thing that's happening. <laughs> that's nice, yeah. Can blonde I just hair. say, I love the minute of the well, the paper goes everywhere. It was a good news week. You're trying to be topical. This is cut out from the yellow pages. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we're, we're trying to be helpful for people that might be looking for electricians as well. <laughs> good idea, I say. And Corinne. What? How are you? Yeah, good. <laughs> and hosting something, is that right? Hosting something? Yeah, I host something yeah, yeah. on another network. On another network? Awkward. Oh. <laughs> Am I allowed to talk about it or not? Yeah, yeah, talk about it. Yeah, it's awesome. It's a show called Airways. It's great. It's cranky people losing their shit. Very <laughs> funny TV. Hey, sounds like this show. Yeah. <laughs> when I first heard that you're doing a show called Airways, I thought it was about respiratory problems. <laughs> I thought it was going to be like half hour show yeah. of people going, ah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> It's just a half hour of me wheezing, <laughs> getting a puffer. Oh, that's better. Oh, no, I need another, another puff. It's riveting television. Riveting. Uh, shall we begin the show? Yes. Our show. Oh, this show, wow. yes. Yeah. First business in this show is What's the Story? Mikey, Stuart, Tom. 
Stay cool. Right. Okay. Oh, that's There's a series of images. They've got to put them together and make a story. Garrett, that's Do a roof tin foil. Yeah. That's not. It's, it's the worst midnight oil video ever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey! I love it here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How can we sleep when our roofs are burning? <laughs> Someone has already made that joke at some point somewhere, surely. I... Yeah, well, but has someone made this one, Tom, for you? How can we sleep when our heads are burning? <laughs> now, the sun! <laughs> I like... Uh, Sorry. You make me feel like I'm from Canada. <laughs> no, 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 Stuart, you, you, you might be aware of Peter Garrett, as you said, as yes. a midnight oil, but... Uh, he, uh, he had, a, he had a, a sea change, a, a, a changed career, so uh, mm. late, late in life, which is always a good thing. Mm -hmm. And he became a politician. He's now Minister for the Environment, the Arts, and doing that a lot. <laughs> uh, yeah. And there's been a bit of uh, controversy over this latest uh, insulation uh, bats in the Belfry scheme. There's, been, there's actually been some, some, some tragedies. And, and there's uh, good reason that he didn't get it right. I mean, he doesn't even know how to insulate his head. <laughs> <laughs> And I know that that's the pot calling the kettle bald, but whatever. <laughs> Who's your education minister? Yahoo Serious? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Ow! Yeah. Ow! Oh, I'll go there. Oh! I love it here. <laughs> You're coming in hard with the Yahoo gear yeah. early. Yeah. Like, I, I forgot that Yahoo Serious existed. And... If you actually get off the... <laughs> You've got an erection right now, you know that. You know that. <laughs> You look, Awkward. <laughs> no, you're, no, it's really, really embarrassing. If you look very carefully in the mental uh, asylum scene of, uh, of young Einstein, um, I play an extra. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, that's one good reason to go down to the old video store and try and dig out a video cassette. Which, were, you in the, uh, were you in the manic depressives room? Yep, 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 yep. yep. I loved that. I rewound that and watched that over and over. You okay, I'm, I'm the 140 kilo guy wearing a nappy. <laughs> Actually, that's, that's, that, 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 that sounds like my wedding night. Yeah. Um, Don't you hate being typecast? <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, uh, well, yes, I've just... got to say, what, what a shit showbiz story that was. I know! <laughs> I know. Well, you've got to say it here, because you're not going to get to say it on Parkinson. <laughs> 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 uh, uh, so th th there's been a major controversy over this uh, uh, rollout uh, uh, insulation scheme. Uh, the opposition's on the minister's back to resign, and it's, it's, it's basically a bit of... All around, not good, happy time for anyone. Ah, uh, they have it. Ten points to them. Let's move on. <laughs> In a last-ditched attempt to hose down the controversy and the burning houses, the federal government has cancelled its $2.5 billion home insulation scheme. But Peter Garrett may still have to face the music. Finally, a task he's qualified for. <laughs> It's ironic the environment minister's name is Garrett, because isn't a Garrett a small, uncomfortable place just below a roof? <laughs> oh, 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 uncertain. <laughs> Bad luck, we're moving on. There's nothing, there's nothing more frightening than an unprepared, undertrained worker in a high-risk position, especially when he's the environment minister. <laughs> no, no, yes, no. Clear, Tom Corinne, all yeah. aboard. All right, oh. go. Boat, boat, what? Boat. Boat. Boat, water. Oh. Water, boat. Duck. Duck. Oh, oh, swan. Oh. Bus. Bus. Bus, water. What is it? It was a duck. little bit idiot. Swan, bus, water. <laughs> <laughs> they've got it, they've got it. Ten points. Ten points. Ten points. Oh. Oh. Any more it sort of is. It, it sort of is. That's pretty much the answer. The ducks, the duck, bus, water. You know, like, I actually think it's a genius idea, making a, a bus that can go underwater, because with rising sea levels, eventually people are going to catch on that we might actually need buses that can float. <laughs> but, um, Does it go under the water or on top of the water? Like, is it a bus boat or a bus submarine? It is not a submarine. Um, That's a shame, because that would be cool. It would be cool. I'm, so the way I understand it operates work? like a boat and then it pulls out. No, I think it drowned. I think they took it for a test run and it drowned a bit. Oh, really? Like, a little bit. Yeah. That sounds like a really horrible episode of Thomas the Tank Engine. <laughs> How good would it be if they got that bus water duck swan thing that you're talking about? Yeah, yeah. that's what it's and called. And just used them in Venice. Just got rid of the gondolas and just drove them around the canals. <laughs> <laughs>
Can oh. you still sing opera on the bus? <laughs> I think it's the amphibious. It's the amphibus, the amphibious bus. Is that what and they called it? The, the amphibus? I don't, I don't know if they did. I think they might have. The terrible but, name. But, but it's the fact <laughs> that they want to make one and it didn't work. I think that's the story. That's a story? They had a crack and it didn't work out? <laughs> Sounds like one of your showbiz stories. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ever tell about the time I was an extra in a, in a, in a bourbon commercial? No. no good. No. <laughs> You know what it sounds like? It sounds like they just reversed a bus into water. <laughs> yeah. And when that didn't work, they said, no, 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 it's an empty it's an bus. It's bus that we reversed in there. Yeah. It was supposed to go underwater when we left the handbrake off. <laughs> do we have it right? You do have it right. Really? Ten points. <laughs> the UK's first floating bus service has been launched in Scotland. Wow, a floating bus. <laughs> Or as we used to call it, a ferry. <laughs> Unfortunately, the Amphibus ran into problems on its first day of testing. Apparently, while you're in the water, you're not supposed to open the doors to pick people up. <laughs> the vehicle crashed into a ramp as it came out of the River Clyde. The wheels on the bus go skid whiz pop. Blub, 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 blub. <laughs> Clunk. Uh, the hull was breached, then the pneumatics got jammed, and the emergency bagpipes failed to deploy from the ceiling. <laughs> Uh, it broke down after only 30 minutes in the water. Turns out the driver had blown a seal. <laughs> Here we go. Oh. Oh. Spinning the balls on his nose, is that what you... Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they, they got there before you. Yeah, sadly. There was a lot more to that joke, but let's just move on. <laughs> So after one absolutely titanic round of Good News Week, the Robins team are on ten points and the Hooper team are on ten points. Coming up, Stephen, Simon and Scott. What?